This is part two and a continuation of our chat with Justin Sung and Michael Say from I Can Study. If you haven't already, head on over and tune into part one before jumping onto part two. If you have, enjoy as we continue our discussion. Do you think that the education system actually sets students up uh, to not learn effectively? Because instead of like, you know, in, in life and in business, the faster you learn, the better you get the results, the yeah. faster you get it. Mm. But when it comes to exams and, you know, students, oh, I've got my exam on this date. So it doesn't really matter how effectively you learn because the exam happens on this date anyway. So there's this thing called expert mimicry, which is basically exactly talking about what you've said right now. Mm. So like in biology, mimicry is when, uh, I don't know, you got like a poisonous spider or something, you know? Uh, and then you've got like a butterfly that tries to look like that spider, you know, that's what mimicry is. You know, it's the, the butterfly is not poisonous. It's mm -hmm. not dangerous. You can eat it if, you know, if you want, um, but it looks, you know, the same way. So in education expert mimicry is like when it seems like you tick the boxes, but actually you didn't, you just learn exactly how to look like you did. Mm -hmm. And so what we've done is we're, we've sort of gamed the system. We've figured out what are the key words that I need? Exactly what do I need to memorize to right. trigger these certain curriculums? Mm -hmm. And that's a fault of, you know, number of stages. Number one, it's a fault in the way that we are teaching and presenting it because we, are, we in a way, actually celebrate that. That's actually successful. And in the other way, it's like the way we're designing our curriculums and assessments means that it's actually possible to do that. So we think we're gaming the system, but we're really just gaming ourselves by doing that, right? We're robbing ourselves of the ability to actually, you know, develop the tools and the skills that we need to, to really do well. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that's also, I'm seeing in, um, you know, a lot of resources, you know, out there, you know, education resources to help you test prep. You know, recently I was in Singapore and decided one of the things to do, um, was to go check out the bookstores, you know, like that sold educational resources. And that I looked at them and I was just like, none of these things, um, encourage, you know, personal, I guess, skill development and like thought processes. It's like literally like you get this book, okay, and then it has this question and it has the model answer just straight up like fully there. And what a kid's gonna do? Well, thinking is obviously tricky, okay? Mm -hmm. It's gonna be time consuming, it's it's difficult, you know, they're, they're scared of failing, right, of course. I'm just gonna memorize this, right? And I'm sure like everyone here knows students who memorize stuff uh, in the hope that the same question pops up, although the chances are- 100%. Yeah, it's like ultra high risk, yes. right? And the moment that the question changes, cause you know, like they're trying to be more creative with assessments now, you know, cause they realize everyone's just memorizing stuff. And that's actually not a very useful skill later on. Um, you know, you get all these kids who get completely bummed up, you know, to the level where now when we're seeing, even during pra practice and studies, like the moment they see something that is unfamiliar to them, they, they withdraw already like mm. in practice, yeah. you know, like hold up, like practice is like a safe thing. You're supposed to experiment, think about stuff, but now you're like with, withdrawing and you're freaking yourself out, you know? So, so that, that's kind of what it is. I, I guess what the reality is that they try to make everything as predictable as possible so that everyone, you know, succeeds in some way. And there's nothing wrong with everyone succeeding. That's not the point. But the point is that that's in tune with how things are measured, you know, with like marks and stuff. Another thing I see a lot of times is that people are extremely mark obsessed. Like they're like, Michael, but I got like, you know, five out of 10 for this quiz. Whereas previously I got eight out of 10. Look, I'm doing worse. I was like, no, hold on a sec. Like, let's look at the reasons behind why you got, you know, less results. And are these actually new mistakes you've made? Because if it is, then that's great. You know, you, you, can, you can work on it. But if it's the same thing, hey, guess what? That's great too. Because you realize you thought you fixed it, but you didn't, mm. right? But they're like, no, 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 I get that. Of course they don't, okay? <laughs> I get that, but it's still five and I put more effort and at least eight, you know? Binary again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and like, it's just the expectations of, of the system. And, um, you know, I, I understand that parents are very busy, you know, and they want the best for their kids. Um, and I think they, they really trust, you know, the system to guide them through these processes. and. You know, I, I, however, I think the reality is that the world's changing at such a rapid pace um, that you gotta, you gotta be pretty, you gotta have a nice suite of transferable skills mm -hmm. and awareness about yourself and how you wanna choose to use that. I mean, decision-making, right? I mean, that's a huge thing. Yeah, well, the weird thing is like, you know, assessments are actually changing. You know, people are starting to wise up. So assessments are getting harder. Mm -hmm. We're not really changing the way that we're no. actually, like yeah. we still to this day, do not really teach people how to actually learn properly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or weirdly, we teach people to learn properly in ways that have only been shown to be effective when you're trying to just rote learn something and memorize, which you're already trying to move away from in the first place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. It, so I, like, I don't know who's driving this, but- I, I find I mean, that really yeah. bizarre because yeah. I think now, because of the age of the internet, you have, you know, your phones, right. your smartphones, you have access to information at your fingertips. Yes. The fact that you have to rote, memorize and yeah. learn yeah. completely baffles me. And I, I'd like to think of myself as a bit of like a, just a more of a, just a logical thinker. Sure. And so when I was in school, I remember thinking, what the hell, how the hell does this even apply in a real life setting? Yep. And I placed zero value on it and therefore I had no interest in learning about it because yeah. I could not transfer that into the real world. Yep. And I think you're talking about obviously um, a lot of uh, students out there who are uh, by blind faith believing that this is the right mm. way of doing it, lack of first principle thinking mm. um, that they end up when they go out into the real world, I'm sure you see this, is that they're completely shocked that yeah. it is nothing like they expect it to be. One of the really important things um, uh, that there's always a big focus on whenever I'm teaching like a technique is to always balance that. So I have to accept that they're gonna be tested in this way. They're gonna find that test result important. I need to make sure that they're gonna do well for it as well as making sure that they're prepared for the transferable stuff. So it's like, yes, this fact is genuinely irrelevant for you. You legit do not need to know this, except you do because it's gonna come up in your test. So we need to find a way to actually develop the skill of being able to think about this in a transferable way and develop those logical first principle thinking skills while also being able to manage seemingly irrelevant details in a more efficient way, rather than just kind of like, because the worst thing is to develop these like habits and essentially self-limiting beliefs about mm. your learning and what you're capable of. You know, there's a lot of people that say they dropped out of high school, you know? It's actually really common, right? If you say like, I, I did badly in high school, but actually later in life, they actually, they're learning fine. Mm -hmm. Like their ability to learn is not actually a problem. It's just that they weren't able to learn in that academic setting. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, those processes involved in learning are there. They've always been there. It's just that they didn't have the particular skill or the technique to use those processes. So for example, let's say that like, I don't know, there's, you learn a, uh, a, let's say that you play tennis, right? And you're like really into tennis. And then uh, you just hear that there's a new shoe that's been released. Right, and then you read about the specs of the shoe, and it's like, okay, previously the heel was. I don't, okay, by the way, again, I, like my baking, you know, I don't play tennis. tennis. Michael knows about baking. Yeah, <laughs> someone play high tennis, <laughs> high heels. Yeah. So, like, um, uh, that you know, you. Uh, I'm gonna use a different example because I just want to make this like you know. Let's say you play the violin, okay? Oh yeah, that's good. Now I don't play yeah. the violin, but I've watched a lot of two-set violin, so I feel like I inherently have some knowledge about this. So. Uh, let's say you play the violin and then you, 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 uh, your friend introduces like this new violin to you and they're talking about the quality of the wood mm -hmm. uh, and they're saying like, okay, um, you know, the sound quality is like a little bit warmer here or like you look at the bow and you say, okay, mm -hmm. the weight distribution, you know, for your bow, like it weighs, you know, this many grams here, you know, right, right at the tip. Whereas, you know, for this bow, it weighs like five grams more or something like that, right? These are very small, fine details. But if you are in that mode where you know about violin, all of that, you're never gonna have to write flashcards on it. Mm -hmm. You're never gonna have to repeat that. As soon as you hear that detail, you know it and you've internalized it because you know how that is relevant mm -hmm. to everything else. And those are the processes that are being activated organically when we learn about something that we're interested in. Yeah. But the, the trick is how do you get that same process to be activated even when you don't really feel interested in something? How do you force your brain to, to think in that way as if you really truly are invested in it even though you know you don't really care? And if you kind of get that, then you'll develop the skills that allow you to learn like transferably mm -hmm. and logically mm -hmm. outside of school, but then you'll also do really, really well in school. You know, I, win -win. I think that's um for me anyway. Like in 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 hearing what you guys do, and in, in, you know, even experience it, and obviously um, hearing from other people's take on what you guys do. That for me is kind of like the big why. Like so mm. Cynic, that's like the big mission, right? Because I know we talk about the education systems, learning and schooling a lot, but it's like it's more the the, the life skills of taking. Yeah how to learn and then you don't have to apply that for me anyway you don't have to apply it to, to learning it's like you can apply it to every single area of your life like if you go into business how do i learn how to hire someone efficiently mm. even though i don't know i've never done hiring how do i learn that skill how do i learn about accounting it's like the important stuff that you can apply it to mm. that's the for me anyway in this conversation like that's the key skill set mm. that so many people don't know um and because we don't teach it as a as a as a, as a young adult you our society is so far behind and- You don't have the uh, habits. We don't have the habits, place, yeah, you know, exactly. Adult. Coming to a business you know, context, I think, I think um, people really, like you know that when you're trying to run a business, uh, or even if you're just like working in someone else's business, there is a lot to learn. Like you're gonna have to learn a lot. But I think there's this kind of, um, 
barrier to the idea of actually going and learning more. So for example, like if you're trying to hire someone new, right? I mean, most people, they think about the idea of having to learn how to hire someone new and they may like go to the extent of reading like an article about it or like a, watching a video, probably that, you know, call up someone that they know that has more experience and say, hey, hey, what are some tips on how to hire people effectively? But really the more you look, the deeper you'd realize it gets. Like there's probably so much. And if you really did know that, your hiring ability might just go through the roof. Mm. But because there is the belief to like, oh, that's too much. Like I can't learn that. You know, that's mm. for someone else. Mm. Like, you know, and they sort of just don't. Mm. And yes, there is the argument that, well, if that's not what you want to be specialized at, maybe, you, you know, you can focus on the thing that you are really good at and leave that to someone else. But also in another context, like especially, if, I mean, a lot of my experience is in small business, right? Mm. And as in a small business, you can't afford to get the hiring expert to do it. Like you have to learn to do certain things yourself and the quality of the, and the outcome directly mm. depends on your ability and competency to do that. So if there's something that you don't know how to do, if you know that you have the ability to just learn it and your actual ability to apply that information will be comparable to someone that actually, you know, is, is a lot more experienced. I mean, that is really, really empowering. And that for me, as someone that ran a business solo for a long time, mm. was a huge boon and, and feeling like I could tackle different challenges. Yeah, I, I, I think the bottom line is understanding the power of um, inquiry, you know, mm. uh, at the end of the day and asking, knowing how to ask questions. Um, and most of the questionings that the questions we get nowadays is, um, you know, like I said before at the beginning, how many hours? <laughs> yep. It's like, okay, so how does, how, how, does, how does that reflect the kind of things that have been going on in someone who's thinking these questions? They're, not, they're basically not thinking. Um, and often it's, you remember things better when you realize things for yourself. But, you know, it's just being a system where it's, it's like a copying thing. It's like a mimicry kind of thing as well. And asking questions um, about why this is relevant to me, I think, has been a big challenge for a lot of students who've not been used to that at all. Yeah. Um, and they're actually discouraged to inquire because, you know, if you inquire and question things too much, that's being a bad boy girl, you know, kind <laughs> of thing. My, my teacher in year four actually had like a parent teacher interview with my parents and they said like do oh, i have trouble yeah. do i have hearing problems because i always <laughs> ask too many questions yeah. <laughs> okay my, yeah my sister got in trouble and um this is one of the reasons why we left taiwan she she was actually disciplined by a teacher for asking too many questions in primary that's unbelievable yeah and my mom was just like i mean she, she was a teacher too she's got she was pissed she yeah, was yeah. like what do you mean it's just like he, she's disrupting the class um she is you know like wants attention for herself um she just, my sister just wanted to know, like, what, what's up, you know? So that was yeah. a big reason as to why it is. But one thing I want to kind of bring back a little bit, you mentioned that nowadays, you know, technology is like, you know, on your phone, like whatever, like it's, it's, it's not an amount of content um, anymore. It's how you absorb it. Mm -hmm. But I can almost guarantee that, um, you know, let's say we look at 50 years ago, right? What was the world like then, okay, versus now? I can almost guarantee that most people learn the same way as their grandparents like straight up, you know, and that's because their parents were told this is the way to do it, fine. And then the parents told their kids, this is the way to do it, fine, okay. Yeah. But what about everything else that's changed? Okay, so that's where you, you, you're missing the point, you know, like quite, quite completely. And not only that, but okay, in school, there are certain objectives, but what's the gap, okay, between school and like uni, and what's the gap between uni and workplace? And even within the workplace, I mean, there's, all sorts of things, right? And it's, it's interesting because I was talking to a career advisor. I work with a lot of career advisors. And um, one time I was just like, oh, so just out of interest, like how do you prepare these students for university? And they go, oh, that's what the university does. And I then kind of talked to the uni. I was like, hey, like, you know, um, I, I had a friend who worked in the uni in, in, the, in, in this kind of um, area. And it's like, what, what do you guys do to help like, the assimilation, you know, process. And it's like, oh, that's what career advisors do. That's what schools do. Oh, I was just like, okay, so like, like <laughs> who's taking responsibility? <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, like it, it's not like we're, we're not trying to point the finger at anyone, but it's just kind of like, well, these are pivotal trans transitional periods, um, and you know, other thing I often think about and I tell students is why are you getting more inefficient as you. Like, why are you studying more as the levels go up? You know, for example, in year 10, you study four hours a day, you know, for example. Um, in year 11, you study, I don't know, six, and then year 12, like, it gets crazy, right? Mm -hmm. 
aren't you supposed to study less as you get, you know, older because your skills have been improved? And everyone's like, I would like to think that way, but I'm not sure if that's how it actually ends up happening. And I, I was kind of thinking, well, what's going to happen like when you get into med school? Are you still going to get tutoring? Right. Like, are you going to yeah. tutored like, you know, five times a week uh, across all your like units or whatever? <laughs> like, what if my doctor late today is like, oh, he's waiting for his tutor. To <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. So, so it's like, well, you know, like the first year medical programming, the amount of um, content compared to year 12. And I, I tell them, I'm like, hey, look, it might be like this much more. And then these kids are like, what, what do you mean? No, nah, they don't believe it. Yeah, so like-, like They um, don't believe it, straight up. It. Yeah, it's the thing I found that um, a lot of like final year high school students, they don't actually realize that the stuff that they learn later after high school is actually harder. So I, you know, I asked them like, okay, if you need the certain level of grades to even be admitted into the program and everyone in the program reached that level of grade and that grade for you is like the goal. Hmm. Like if I get this grade, my life is sussed you're about to enter into a cohort where literally every other person got that grade and half of them are getting C's. Mm -hmm. just, just spend like four seconds <laughs> to think about what that might mean, you know? And then they're like, oh yeah, I guess that makes sense. But they, don't, they still don't believe it. Like yeah, they, they, just, they can't really like accept that actually things yeah, get it's, harder. It's kind of like, I'll just, I'll just kind of magically they deal just do with it. It's all magic, right? Magic. It's all yeah, magic. It's all yeah. magic. The magic when I get yeah. there. It's unbelievable. And, um, it's, like, it's like a cartoon. Like the more, the more friendship and the more like power of belief you have, just the, the better you get, you know? <laughs> and love love like will when, find a way. Yeah, like yeah. Teletubbies, yeah. right? Like yeah. you know, shoot hearts out of your stomach together and it's like, yeah, yeah. It's like no, I'll be fine because when I get into med school, um, it'll be fine anyway. It'll all work so that's out. Just, that's just, and they're motivated. That's, you know? As long as you're motivated, you have that yeah, fire man. of motivation. What what's gonna happen oh, when you funny. can't do it? Motivation's they're like, "It's a funny one." Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, I'll just, I'm just gonna dig deeper. Yeah. I'm just gonna like <laughs> will my way through it. It's like, yeah, sure, bro. Like you can dig deeper <laughs> like that. Yeah. that. It's a fire of motivation, not a brain of motivation. You don't find <laughs> extra like neurons in there, you know. I literally know students who like as a as a group of friends um, go on YouTube and have this. I don't know how it works, but. They basically find new motivational Motivation videos, videos. Yeah, just and they have a folder shared across like the friends. Just to G each other up. Yeah, yeah. And then basically on the way to school, you know, on the, on the train or whatever, they would just like, you know, get real hyped. Wow. And that's how they get through the day. And then they, that, that's, what, that, that's what they do. And we see a lot of students going, oh, but I'm like, motivation is really difficult. Like this is like one of the top few like things we get asked about. How do I stay motivated? And they, they think that motivation is directly correlated to like, you know, how you need motivation to do something. And we're like, are you motivated to, how much motivation do you need when you wake up in the morning to brush your teeth? It's like, do you gotta like hype yourself up? Do you need to watch like a video? <laughs> motivation <laughs> so yeah. good today. <laughs> right, because, like honestly, sometimes like, when I'm waking up in the morning, like, you know, there's a high level of motivation needed for me to get to the first step of just you know, <laughs> moving. Yeah, like, I'm, you do I'm like, you find yourself not being able to get out of bed because you're like, oh, okay, like, I got to brush my teeth. I got to, like, eat, like, you know, like, yeah, you I just watch, do it. Watch some Tony Robbins. I'm going to smack and smash plug today. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. it. So, so the question is, like, you know, motivation, like, how does it actually work? But, you know, because it's emotional, mm. right? And a lot of times students will tell me, like, they'll go, oh, Michael, I don't think I'm doing well. And I'm like, okay, tell me the reasons as to why. And they often start their sentence by saying, it's because I feel blah, 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 blah. Uh, I was like, okay, it's fine. You feel this way, but why are you feeling this way? And then when you get to that level, they're kind of like, it's all, you know, most of the kind of things that make them feel a certain way are the what ifs. You know, it's like, oh, but you know, I'm worried, worried about what if I don't get the score? What if like this doesn't turn out the way I want it mm. to? And I'm kind of like, so you are basically stressing out about a hypothetical when you're doing the actual like practice questions we're, we're, you should really be all 100 in on like looking at this question you're basically distracting yourself mm. from overcoming this obstacle by the fear of like you know what might happen yeah this episode is produced and brought to you by social wave social wave is a strategic content marketing agency helping businesses grow revenue using video podcasts and seo head on over to socialwave.com.au to find out more now back to the show I would, I would, you know, make a plea to any parents that are listening to this. I mean, think back to when you were like between the ages of, I don't know, like four to 13 years old, 
You do like remember that exam that you didn't do well in, and now your life is like terrible because of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> said no parent ever. <laughs> yeah, so stop putting the pressure. You know, like just at a young age, let them know it's okay not to do well. Like what what's important is like just the process and the thinking behind it, and it's not about just the outcome. And yeah. you know, just instill mm -hmm. that in a young age yeah. so that they have this kind of safety at being able yeah. to experiment and grow and actually thrive. Because at a certain mm -hmm. point, these results will start mattering for something more. And at that point, they either have that mentality like, and the growth to be able to tackle it, or they don't because they were you know, so sort of sheltering themselves and protecting themselves against possible failure. I'm talking about the kids and teaching them how to accept failure. There's a really good um, question that I've stolen from, I think the founder of Spanx, Sarah, um, something she, like multi-billion dollar company. Mm -hmm. And her dad used to um, ask her at, at dinner every night, what, what did you fail in? Mm -hmm. And they celebrate the failure and yeah. what did you learn from it? That's, that's so good. Yeah, something I'm stolen from my kids. There's, there's, every every I, night at dinner. I I'll think there them. is maybe like three Asian parents that have done, had that conversation. I'm like one <laughs> yeah. third of them. So I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, probably your ancestors at some point. They're just like, what is this idiot doing? Like, what do you fail? Fail is not an option. <laughs> yeah. And why, why is the word failure like, you know, turned into this thing where, you know, you can't even fail mm. during preparation, mm. right? Oh, because you've got to like prepare in the same way as when you sit in an exam, well, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Because the purpose yeah. is literally different. Yeah. I really feel that like a lot of parents need to place more human expectations on their on their kids rather than seeing their kids as like a a, a concept to be to be perfectly mm, yeah, yeah. optimized. Like, you know, you wouldn't like you know in your own life that failure is inevitable. Like you know that like you know, like every adult human being knows that if it is not directly proportional to success, like you know that you can work, some of the hardest per working people that I've ever met, like have no career level success to put to their name. You know, they're mm. working like triple jobs, mm. you know, like they work very, very hard. It's not about the effort. Like we, when you know these things where you spent an entire life to accumulate this wisdom, why do you not, you know, bring that down to your to your kids why do you not teach them these things like why do you let them go through the same mistakes mm. that you spent you know 40 years wrapping your head around and you just you know like it's, it's like sadistic you know stop doing that <laughs> yeah well i mean I'm, I'm conscious of time as well but I, i'm really curious to sort of understand you know with i can study who it is that you guys predominantly serve obviously you talk about students but there's obviously different types of students there as well mm -hmm. so if you were could if you can break, break that down for us and, and obviously give us an overview of i can study and for those who are interested in sort of either partaking or you know getting interested or understanding what you guys do can you share a little bit about that yeah sure i mean look um i can I can study. I think we, we you know get students. Well, students write us um, these kind of reviews every so often. Um, like and essays, like essays, <laughs> yeah. like biographies. Yeah, yeah. Degrade them as well. <laughs> like they're, they're like literally like thousand words. Like yeah. they're, they're long wow. yeah. from young people. And I think the main thing is, um, the, the, I would if I was to summarize one word is like um, they they feel that through um, the course they we teach them this whole system. You know, it's not just Here's the technique here, here's the technique here. But it's like, this is how you should think and you know, approach things. And fundamentally. So fundamentally, yeah. like there's mindset stuff in there. You know, there, there are, you know, this is how you like remember things. This is how you use things. So it's a whole, it's very complicated, you know, from the back end, but we've made it quite digestible. But what has become the reality, especially if people are really trying to do something better for themselves, is that this whole system gives them a lot of hope and confidence that they can further themselves and equip themselves I think we had an earlier com conversation. It's it's almost like an arsenal of weapons yeah. that they can use to you know basically dispatch uh, right. their will. Like here is a learn here here is the content. Here is why I need it for, and the the assessment will whatever it may be, you know, whether it's for um, students in high school, university, or professionals. You know, professionals. We actually have a lot of professionals around. Maybe forty percent of our students right now are professionals. And these guys are, you know, specialist doctors. These guys are lawyers. These guys are in the IT engineering industry. They're trying to find um, basically that that system that can help them get out of their whatever situation they want to, or allow them to be in that situation they want to. But it's just giving them a lot of hope. And basically, that amount of control is something that I think is very for them liberating. And especially, this is the thing. You know, I, I talk to a lot of students, and they go, you know, if what I am doing just actually works as intended, like even, even once, like that's enough for me to be like, I'm gonna do a lot of this. And we find a lot of students when they realize that, hey, this is how you do it. 
And not only that, but there is a level like two to it, three to it, four to it, five to it. You can do so much more. It's like actually motiv- like super motivating and learning becomes really fun. Okay. Um, obviously, when we're talking about what it does for people, I mean, efficiency, if you can do better in half the time, I mean, you got you know so much time um, to do a lot of things. I mean, I remembered um, one of our students last year, um, he ended up um, getting, getting a equivalent um, score of... Um, 99.95 ATAR. So that's like, that's a, you know, you can't really get too much higher. He did another program um, that basically um, converted it to 99.95. But um, he had to basically negotiate with the teachers because he was writing notes differently. Like, for example, we teach mm-hmm. students to not write linear, linear notes. It's basically copy and pasting. And guess mm-hmm. what? You don't read it anyway <laughs> afterwards. We all know that. Like, you write like pages and pages. Next day, you look at it and you're like, that's my handwriting. <laughs> well, I don't remember any of this. <laughs> And apparently I just need to do it again and again. He had to negotiate a deal where um, I think if, if I remember correctly, if I get three 100% in the next three tests, you let me study the way I want to. And then he did it. And they let him study the way he wants to. Which was how? How did he want to study? Oh, well, to learn more about that, you're going to have to... <laughs> oh, cliffhanger. Yeah. Wait, so, uh, wait, yeah. So we, we serve a wide range of ages. Yeah. Uh, our youngest student is like single digits, I think. Yeah, just, um, just, just um, yeah, single digit. Just on the, like, on the other side. Not like, not like they just became <laughs> zero years old. Like, yeah, we, we, don't, we don't, yeah, yeah, it's not really, uh, it's pretty, yeah. It's actually, no, like, um, they're like nine or something like that. Uh, um, I'll, and I'll then, do you one better. It's, it's actually eggs. I've got my son on it. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, yeah, I'm putting my kids for it. Wow. Yeah, so starting from really young, uh, and then our oldest is like, I think is 74, 75 or yeah. something. So we have, incredible. A, we have a wide range. What we realize is that um, uh, people that make certain mistakes, at a certain point in life, those mistakes get ingrained, and yeah. then they create just different c- problems. But they're essentially the same problems. So mm. all of these things, they apply in different contexts. Uh, it's essentially the same thing but it's just in a professional setting. So it kind of looks different, but when you kind of go down to the root of it, it's, it's actually exactly the same thing. It's the same bad habits mm. from before. And um, one of the things we found was that, uh, like with COVID and all of that sort of stuff, you know, a lot of people were losing their jobs. They are realizing that their job security wasn't that, that good. They needed to learn new skills. We've got a big influx of new people coming yeah. onto the course mm. because it was like the first time that they were, some of them going back to uni, some of them taking online courses or whatever it was. and. Right, you know, they yeah. use I, that to kind of yeah. career I, I swap. I think the professionals yeah. is, is such a, a, a like a good um, target market for, for you guys. Mm. And and the reason I said that is because I've actually gone for it myself. Mm. Um, because when we first started talking, I'm like, I've I've, I've, <laughs> I've read Tim Ferriss, I've read Jim yeah, Pick. Yeah, right. like, what do you know about studying? But like going through the actual process, it's like I can I can tell, and not just like in business either, because you know with business with marketing, what I do, I've got to constantly be upskilling. It's always changing. But even in the other stuff that I'm passionate about, like you know Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or surfing, the way that I, I think about things and process and learn things, it's different as well. So I think the professional side of things, or even just people who enjoy learning, I think that's such a good market um, mm. to, to help people mm. just to think differently and learn differently because yeah. there's, there, there's yeah. a lot of stuff you know like um uh there's always like uh like workshops and seminars that are happening like especially in corporate space right you know there's always like some kind of like someone's mm-hmm. coming to speak you know they do a workshop and things but how much of that actually translate like of the people that are in the room like did, did they really upskill like to that level that was expected are you even like measuring that in the first place but people also fetishize learning they learn because they like feel good about learning oh, but sure. they don't do anything Makes with it right yeah. actually yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no results yeah, yeah. yeah people talk about how many um, pages of notes they've written. Yes. That's, that's a very common thing. I and think, I, I think, cause I, I, I've thought about that kind of I, like romanticization yeah. of like just the concept of learning before. I think a lot of that happens is uh, because of the fact that people like the idea of learning, but they don't actually have the ability necessary to convert that into something meaningful straight away. Yes. Mm. So they sort of have this illusion that they're lear- learning because as they are reading it, it's like, oh, it's making sense. Like, it feels good. They get that kind of engagement there. And then after, you know, like the book is shut, like a month later, what is actually sort of manifested from that? And there's a sort of deficit in being able to understand it and it makes sense to being able to then apply something to make meaningful changes in your life. Absolutely. I think the fetishization of learning would be less so if there was a much closer connection between learning and actual action yeah so a big part of what we want to do is to um let people understand you know the basic components of what learning looks like you know our students is like can you show me what it looks like they're like what are you even talking about (laughs) um parents you know that's not even you know get 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 there but um and and you know it's 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 interesting because one thing that we get asked quite a lot is um so what's like the commitment 
you know, to like transform your learning. I mean, you're talking about something that makes a lot of sense, but I've tried it all my life and like, I've you know not done very well. And, you know, like the first point is to be like, well, do you even know what it looks like? You don't. All right. So, you know, for example, with us, we understand that a lot of students um, have a certain goal in mind when they join the course, right? They're like, I've got this test and like, you know, like it's always like that. <laughs> like a test in like, you know, one month, sometimes it's less. Or like a week. Yeah. Or like a week or something. Yeah. And then, you know, because it's magic, right? Um, they expect some <laughs> kind of stuff to happen. But, you know, the, the course is la- uh, built in a way that is layer upon layers and layers. And you just get more and more and more efficient, more engrossed and more intentional with everything. But the commitment for us is like, well, if you're already learning or you're trying to learn, or if you're already trying to, let's, let's bring it back. If you're trying to study, okay, because we know not all learning leads to study. Other way around. Well, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Other way around. Thanks for the correction. <laughs> If you just replace the effort you're putting in already, okay, with these techniques, and I think most of our students spend something like 20 minutes on the actual course, um, every like two, maybe three days, and then they use that, um, these techniques um, or, you know, mindsets or whatever anyway, that's going to create them a lot of benefit. So from that, you know, that's a very, very small investment. Yeah. Okay. It's like, it's, it's like, I guess, if you think about it in terms of like the ROI, right? Let's like yeah, say you're running like a bunch of Facebook ads, for example, right? <laughs> And then like your your cost per click is like seventy dollars. It's like damn, you've done this man. before, haven't you? <laughs> well, I, I learned a lot about marketing. Usually, in the eighties and dog food, yeah. all about marketing. That's now he's like grilling me on stuff. <laughs> uh, I need to you know scope out the people I'm working with. Um, no, like so so let's say that you've got like some crazy high like cost per click on on some Facebook ads that you're running, and then you you see that there's this course right like on how to optimize your Facebook ads. Like, we've all seen the you know ads for that, mm-hmm. right? And then you, you know you might think like, well, how how long is a commitment for this? It's like, well, we'll we'll start teaching you like some ways that you can start optimizing it basically from day one, okay? But it's like, well, how long will it take for me to finish, like master it? It's like, well, I mean, like in the three days that you've spent just like thinking how long will it take for me to master it, you've already lost the like the $5 per click that is being saved. Like as you go, it just mm. gets better and better and better. Like there's no reason, like it's irrelevant to think how long will it take to master? Like mm-hmm. it can take you a hundred years to master it. It doesn't mean that the gains that you're going to get in the time you do spend on it is uh, any less worthwhile so what's the what's the end goal for i can study do you guys just want to keep serving as many people as you can what's what's the plan i guess at least in the short and the long term we're sort of um just exiting this phase where we're really happy with kind of the way we're delivering it you know like it's consistency yeah like yeah like we 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 spend a lot of focus on trying to make sure that the outcome is as consistent as possible for as many people as possible because i think that's really important for especially type of thing that we are doing because there's a high level of skepticism about this yeah. mm-hmm. so we need to hold ourselves to like a very high standard of like proving it so we're sort of exiting that phase now and we're now looking at scaling it out beyond more than just a few thousand that we've um sort of got so the next step for us would be to really start bringing this to a much wider audience and, and generating a lot of discussion, like this type mm. of discussion, really getting people that are interested to start thinking and exploring and sort of changing that method of thinking. And I guess that translates to the long-term goal, which is we both personally believe that it is both possible and, um, and, and beneficial mm-hmm. for the normal method of thinking about learning to change towards how we are, you know, are, are teaching things. You know? The way that we consider right now as the norm it's absolutely insane. Mm. It's there's no possible way that like, except for this weird uh, series of events that has made the education system the way that it is right now, you know, that led to all of these things that with the invention of a printing press. And so since now we are starting to read left to right and now learning equates to reading left to right. It's like, you know, mm. like this strange combination of events that's made it so that when we think about learning and studying, we think of this very strange artificial box where we intuitively feel that it's boring and tedious and ineffective. And we already think it doesn't work and we're finding inconsistent results with it. I think it needs to change to something that's actually like, here, we're like, you know, we're in the 21st century now, we've got some up-to-date research. We know how learning actually works a little bit better now. Let's actually design techniques based on how we know learning actually works and make that the norm. I think that's very sensible. And it's viable. And I think if we get enough critical mass, mm. that can, um, like, it can be yeah. possible. I think, like, for example, Will, like, your, your, your son's eight. Mm. If he comes home one day and starts talking about how he's learning, I think that's, that's pretty awesome. 
you know, mm-hmm. like realizing, hey, look, you know, dad, I realize this thing, you know, um, um, I, I can learn this way now instead of this way. And this is the reason why. I mean, it doesn't need to be a com- complex, comprehensive kind of response. Mm-hmm. But I guess getting, <laughs> letting people to know that there's this thing that even exists and that um, you can actually do something about it. I think that will bring about a massive social change. So I always look at I can study as a as a business on a bit of a social mission in that regard. Um, and you know it's, it's funny because um, I go to um, I, I talk to a lot of different people um, in different countries and whatnot. And um, recently I was talking to a um, Singaporean person, and then they're like, "Oh, the, the German system is like amazing." You know, they've got their, like everything sorted. I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> and then I happened to talk to a German guy, okay, like a week after, and they're like, oh, you know, the Singaporean system. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, Do you, did you know, like, <laughs> I was talking to the Singaporean guy, okay, and they're saying this, and then they're just like, what, but, but, like, this is, this is how I feel. Like, I thought, like, so at the end of it, it's just like, let, let's cut the speculation, okay, and let's get to the nuts and bolts of it, the science of it. Because if there's a science behind it and it's proven and it, it's like concrete and then people can literally draw, for example, the process, you know, we're not talking about some general flow chart. We're talking about some like concrete thing that has, you know, correlation, causation, you know, that type of thing. And what goes into it, it's like the recipe, mm-hmm. right? We want people to be aware that number one, there's a recipe. Number two, what it kind of looks like. So they can be in the position to not like doubt themselves and to pursue things because they're like, all right, if I, if I need to get there, this is the part of the recipe I need to work on. Because at the end of the day, yeah, practice makes perfect only when you know, the, the thing that you're practicing is perfect. But at the same time, if you're not practicing the right things, uh, you get really good at doing the wrong things, right? It becomes habit, right? It becomes permanent. So practice always makes permanent. It's just which way you want to go. Yeah. And I think, to, I guess, to wrap it up, you know, I sort of think of like, James Clear, Atomic Habits, you know, it could be go the negative way or the positive yeah. way with mm-hmm. a lot of this stuff as well. So what yeah. you guys are doing is- We teach you know, about this whole, you know, the marginal gain, he talks about marginal gains mm-hmm. and that where that's, you know, we have that built into the into the program that we teach as well. Like, you know, the idea exactly as you've said, like over time, which way will it stack? You know, that's a choice that people actually have. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Now, if um, obviously people listening to this are gonna be really interested if they wanna check you guys out, where's the best place to start? Where can they find you guys? In terms of I can study, I mean, just the website, I can say dot, dot com. Um, or I, I also talk a little bit more about kind of the, um, sort of like the theories and the discussions and, and stuff about it more on my, my personal channels as well. So um, like LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, YouTube, yeah. you just search for Justin Sung, then you'll find things like that. All you know, all you know, come together. So if anyone's interested in having you know more conversations or discussions or learning more about that, then probably a good place to check out would be one of those channels or on the website. Yeah, and if anyone wants to get in contact with me, um, so Michael um, dot tsai at icanstudy dot com. Um, just for any ideas or discussions surrounding um, what we're going to do and what we've got plans. We got a lot of plans. I think we've got a lot of things we need to do. Um, and I think it's about time that, you know, we kind of did them. Um, just because, you know, the, the issues that we see, for example, in, in Australia and New Zealand, they're, they're not exclusive at all. It's a global issue. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Super global. Uh, super global. And then it's almost like people are surprised that it's like that. But no, it's not. Yeah. Um, we, have a, we have students in 117 countries and the problems are essentially the same. Like, yeah. it's, it's basically, yeah, like... Um, it's both shipping, scary, but it's yeah. also like, it makes it really solvable as well in a lot of it, ways. It does make it solvable. It does make it solvable. And that, that goes directly against, you know, what people say is like, everyone learns differently. It's like, yes, everyone learns differently, but mostly everyone learns the same because like we're all humans. Yeah, yeah we're, we're all humans. Our human brains are programmed pretty much the same, except for a few variations. But if we can just nail down the part that is the same, you can you can you know, optimize the variations yourself. But let's just get the solid like ninety nine percent done first. Yeah, and we're not talking about like necessarily like mastering it. You know, like I said, it's about getting the getting the first step um, mm. and getting the benefits. incremental improvement. Yeah, incremental improvement. And like you know, like I said before, if something works, then off you go. Yeah, absolutely. Well, gents, thank you so thank you so much for actually coming on the show. Um, really appreciate you guys coming on. Um, obviously, Will as well for being on the show as well. Yeah, so, for the invite. Yeah. no, absolutely. And um, we'll drop all of the links on the show notes and that sort of stuff. Um, obviously, when the episode goes live, hopefully everyone can get in touch with you. Cool. Obviously, if they've got questions or they want to check out what you guys do. But again, thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, good. Thanks for having us. Much pleasure. Awesome. Thanks for listening to the Level Asian Podcast. Make sure you subscribe and leave us a five star review if you enjoyed the episode. And why not share it with friends and family who might enjoy it too? Also, 
Make sure you head over to loveallasianpodcast.com to join our email list and to receive the latest updates and get notified when the next episode drops. If you know a great guest we should feature, email us at contact at loveallasianpodcast.com or DM us on our socials in the show notes. Catch you on the next episode.